All right, class, today we're gonna to be learning about everybody's favorite spider. Well, maybe it's not everybody's favorite, but a lot of people like it. It's the black and yellow Argiope. 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 Today we're going to be learning about the black and yellow black and yellow garden spider. Everyone's favorite. The black and yellow argiope spider is known by many names including black and yellow garden spider, garden orb weaver, golden garden spider, riding spider, yellow golden argiope, corn spider, zipper spider, or just garden spider. And that's what I'm going to call it here for the most part, garden spider. This is one of the most well-known spiders in the United States. And even though it looks like a wicked, multicolored black widow, most people are quite fond of it. They are beneficial in that they are predators of insects that are considered pests. And many people have seen garden spiders during the summer in shrubs, tall grasses, country porches, and, well, gardens. I grew up in a large city, so I didn't see these spiders often. However, I recall many trips to my grandparents' homes where they were plentiful around fences, shrubs, and again, gardens. I would often catch grasshoppers and throw them into an Argiope's intricate web, and I was mesmerized by the speed in which the spider would subdue and package the prey. These spiders are basically harmless, but they are capable of biting and inflicting some pain. Argiopes are not aggressive and are mostly gentle to humans, but will bite if mishandled. The pain might be comparable to a wasp sting or a bee sting, and while there is some venom involved, it is harmless to humans unless a person is allergic to spider and or insect venom. Because Argiopes are orb weavers, females spin circular webs, the process of which can take hours. They then usually build heavy zigzagging areas to their webs, known as stabilimenta. The stabilimenta resembles writing, which is why they are sometimes called writing spiders. It reminds me of Charlotte's Web. Radiant. Terrific. Scientists at Texas A&M University report that the purpose of web stabilimenta is unknown. Although some believe it may attract prey, provide structural ability, and or prevent birds from flying through the webs. What is known is that only spiders that are active in the daytime use stabilimenta. Males also build webs for food, but only when they are young. Once they become adults, males leave and wander in search of females. Argiopes often stage in the center of their webs, waiting for some unlucky insect to get caught up in the extremely strong silk. Prey includes grasshoppers, wasps, june bugs, and other beetles, flies, moths, and even praying mantises. Once an insect is stuck in the web, an argio brushes to the prey and spins a cocoon around it with dozens of strands of silk. It does this with great speed, using its long legs to make sure the victim's attempt to fight back is rendered useless. The whole thing is very impressive. Once it gains control of the prey, it bites it one or more times, injecting venom to subdue it even further. Garden spiders often save the packaged prey in the web for later consumption, then go back to waiting for more insects to become ensnared in the web. However, if it is hungry, it will eat the prey right away. Argiopes will sometimes drop to the ground and hide when frightened. Webs are rebuilt each night, but I have seen them do it during the day if the web was damaged enough. According to scientists at the University of North Carolina, the spokes of the web are not sticky, but the spiral portions are. At night, females consume the sticky strands of web before spinning new ones. It is thought they gain some nutrition from minute insects and even miscellaneous organic matter caught in the web. Also, garden spiders have an odd behavior where they shake back and forth in their web. This seems to occur upon human approach, but may occur when any potential predator nears. I can't find a definitive explanation as to why they do it, but it has been theorized that it may make it more difficult for a potential predator to get a good bead on the spider or perhaps the spider is making itself look larger, or to appear menacing. That all sounds plausible, but no one is certain, and it probably wouldn't do any good to ask the spiders themselves why they do it. WSUX News, live, local, late breaking. We begin this evening with tragic news. Three teens drown on Lake Lottawada today. Oh, what hold on, shut up, Jane. I'm getting word that Dick Hedinson is in the field with some of these strange spiders trying to find out why they wig out when people get close. Is that right, Dick? That's right, Tom. 
I'm out in the garden with a couple of black and yellow Argeob spiders to find out why they shake their webs when they see a perceived threat. Can you please tell us why you shake your webs when a human approaches? How about you? Can you tell us why you shake your web? You're shaking right now. Don't you feel you owe it to the citizens to let them know why you shake your webs? Is it so potential predators can't draw a bead on you? Or is it to make yourself look more menacing in your web? Please, anything, any comment? Well, Tom, it's a no comment from out in the garden. I guess the theories will just have to remain theories. Back to you. Thanks, dick. Back to you, Jane. However, when a female oscillates her web vigorously just after prey and snares itself, it is believed to be an attempt to fully entangle an insect before it can set itself free. Female garden spiders grow to about 1 and 1 eighth inches, not including the legs, but they appear larger, especially just before they lay eggs, like this big female here. Females have black and yellow abdomens and silvery cephalothoraxes. In fact, their Latin name means gilded silver face. With larger adults, their legs are mostly black, but are kind of a translucent tan nearer to the body. The legs of younger females can be banded with those colors, as seen here. Males are less frequently seen, probably due to the fact that they are much, much smaller than females, only growing to about three-eighths of an inch, not including the legs. Males resemble females, but are duller. Juveniles resemble adults somewhat, and they are a mixture of brown and dull yellow. Juvenile legs are often banded as well, as seen here. This individual was maybe the size of a dime, legs and all. Argyops prefer sunny areas among gardens, shrubs, tall grasses, and plants. I have seen them in everything from overgrown fields to cattails near ponds to flower gardens in front of homes. Black and yellow Argyops breed once a year. Adult males roam in search of potential mates. According to scientists at Texas A&M University, once a female is located, a male will build a small web either nearby or in an outlying part of the female's web. Potential males court by plucking and vibrating her web. I've witnessed this behavior before, and one time, when a female was busy eating her meal, a male came knocking, or plucking, if you will. The male plucked on the female's web as he continued to get closer, but she was having none of it. She left her food and charged the male with lightning speed. However, he was quicker than she was, and was able to get away, but just barely. I found the whole thing quite comical, but I imagine that the male didn't. The lesson I learned from observing the behavior was, don't mess with a lady while she's eating. After mating, each female produces one or several brown papery egg sacs. They are round to teardrop in shape, and up to an inch wide. Each sac contains between 300 and 1400 eggs. The female attaches her egg sac to one side of her web, or even a few feet away. The sac is usually suspended with silk, and suspending the cocoon is particularly effective against ant predation. The multi-layered wall of the egg sac provides some protection, but unfortunately, parasites and predators, including birds, prey upon the spiderlings so that only a few survive the winter and even fewer survive to become adults the following season. There's one generation per year. Males usually die after mating, but females will live until the first hard frost of the year, sometime around October or November though females in warmer climates may live for multiple years. The black and yellow Argyope is found all over the United States, Mexico, and Central America, save for higher elevations. Luckily, for this video, I had a friend who let me film all the spiders in his tomato garden. Hey, what are you doing on my property? <laughs> yeah, get your fat ass out of here. But honestly, while I had many, many photos of this spider species, I did not have a lot of video footage, so I really did visit the garden of a friend. The first individual that I observed and filmed was this big mama. I knew she was about to create an egg sac, so I wanted to get as much footage as I could before she did. Another indication that she was ready to lay eggs was this. When this grasshopper jumped into her web, she didn't move at all. There was absolutely no room in her abdomen for any more food whatsoever. I also noticed this male was with her, and I wasn't sure how long he would be there either, so I wanted to film him as much as possible as well. I would have loved to have stuck around and see the female create an egg sac, but we were currently in the middle of a heat wave, so by noon the heat was just plain dangerous. In fact, we were under daily excessive heat warnings. On day two, I noticed the female's abdomen had shrunk quite a bit, and there was no doubt that she had laid eggs. 
I searched as much as possible without destroying the garden, but I was unable to locate the egg sac. Also, the mail was gone, which is what I thought would happen. But it was a great experience and I will continue to monitor the progress of these spiders. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. When a male is serenading a female, what do you suppose it sounds like to her when he is plucking that web? Maybe like this? But heck, depending on where it lives, it could sound something like this. Or maybe it sounds like this.